Hello everyone, the time is at last come to where I can actually put a little bit of time in rebuilding and refurbishing a lot of my great great uncle's old tools from his blacksmith shop back in the like 1800s, early 1900s. So I'm really excited to start taking this thing apart. As you can see, this thing weighs probably about 80 some odd pounds and it's completely seized up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing apart, strip it, um, take all the rust off, sharpen the bits, and like just really give it an overall beat. But before I start taking this thing apart, I really wanna just study this thing. I wanna understand the thought process behind this homemade, you know, purpose-built machine. And I wanna take you on the journey with me. Now, the first thing that jumps out to me is the scale of the bar. They were forging this stuff from three inch by one inch flat stock, which actually turns out to be one of my favorite bars to forge with. No one really forges this stuff anymore because it's pretty hard. And the reason it's so big is these guys were forging uh, farm implements. This is way before, like they were the fabrication shops. You know, like if someone's tractor broke down, you'd go to a blacksmith and they'd rebuild that thing. You know, back when they were powered by hit and misses and stuff like that. Now, the second thing that jumps out to me are all of these square bolts and nuts. How cool are those? Those are from, I mean, who knows when, because, you know, hex bolts started taking off in the early 19th century, you know? So they could be from mid 1900s f further back. And the third thing that really jumps out to me is that all of this beautiful wood joinery, they didn't do this for looks. They did it because it would last and they knew that they would have a guy just absolutely going to town on the other end of that bar and someone else was holding the stock. You know, there's a reason you would build things like this because they lasted and that's a reason that it still survives. Oh, it's just so cool and how weathered all this wood is. Who knows the stories that this thing can tell. Now, I also have to point out, I'm really curious what SAG means. I want to do a little bit of a deep dive. It could have been the initials of one of the workers. It could have been uh, their business name at one point. Also, uh, a lot of blacksmiths would test a lot of their brands um, inside of shelving units, inside of drawers, you know, wooden beams all around the shop. They would test them, you know, before they go sold them to the uh, customer. It's so neat to be able to follow their train of thought. You know, they, they probably originally thought they were going to get two holes down on this thing, but this curve cost a little bit too much material. So they got one out and it apparently worked just fine for them. You can see a little bit of a weld here where they joined uh, inch and a quarter bar. Now here they were being awfully clever. They made it to where that they could replace, sharpen, and maintain that hardened steel bit surface where the actual rubber meets the road. And everything else is probably mild steel. Actually, this is probably all iron. I'm also noticing quite a bit of chatter marks. I don't know what that is. Maybe that was part of this, you know, like, uh, uh, oh, you know what? I bet you I know exactly what that is. Now that I'm thinking about it and looking at it, this material was probably some type of drag plate that they repurposed for this. I was thinking maybe they were hammering on it, uh, trying to cut something a little bit too large in here, but it's just too consistent. If you like, get close up, you can maybe see that. But yeah, the chatter marks, I bet you, is part of some type of friction plate, which means this is probably hardened here. How cool. I just continue to make funny little discoveries as I go. So you can see the original plate where they wanted this element at the end of this guy here to strike. They wanted it to go down. But it looks like they added this funny little piece of lumber and then adjusted it accordingly to the exact amount to where that's where all they needed. They all, all they needed was that to just to pass just by that much, not go down all the way. So they added this little piece of lumber. How fun. It's almost like I get to meet my great, great uncle without ever getting to meet him. I can just like follow his thoughts. As I scour over this tool, there's something that is really puzzling me. This is solid bar. Now, there is a perfectly quarter inch, very sharp gouge taken out of this thing, and it's like a scoop. It is the strangest, I don't know what did that. It's not a cutting torch, or I don't see any friction lines, like it was a grind or anything like that. And it's curved, so whatever it was, it wasn't straight. I, I don't understand what made that hole in this thing. Interesting. 
And I got this thing flipped around and you could definitely tell this was a workhorse in their shop. You can just see how much wear has taken place along this wood and so much wear in fact that they clearly noticed and they slapped on this galvanized piece of sheet metal to stop it from wearing. And look at this funny little shim. I'll make sure to keep that. Hold, held down by some, <laughs> by some nails, some galvy nails, to make sure this thing's secure. And you can see that this thing is really taking a beating from piece of steel that are being cut from the bit and then slammed down. And looky here. Oh, you have some little treasures hidden inside. We'll pull those out and save those for later. I got to tell you, it's really cool to be able to see the very like active decisions that were taking place while they were building this thing. As you can see, they ran this material out wild so that it, pretty much you have a friction here that maintains this being straight. This can only go up and down thanks to all of the material over here in friction and all of the material over here. If they just had this end here, that could open up and not have a nice shear point here. Very clever indeed. I, I just, I love this so much. This is fascinating to witness. I can't wait to get like this all cleaned up, get all this gunk off, very precious gunk to me, get all that off so that I can see how they joined these two. It could be a forge weld. Okay, so I'm trying to keep my excitement down, but before I start tearing this thing apart, unbolting all of these pieces one, one at a time, start cleaning them up. The first thing I wanna do is tighten up all of these square carriage bolts. I'm gonna get everything nice and cinched down so that as I'm prying on it, I'm not loosening up any of these bolts and perhaps damaging any of this probably 100 year old wood in the process. And what's nice about these square bolts is you don't have to worry about having the right socket sets. You can just, <laughs> just adjust and go. And I tell you what, it is weird having a modern tool adjusting a lot of this ancient stuff. Okay, now this right here gets me kind of wound up a little bit. So it's this right here. That right there is just a good old devil nut. So what's, what's taking place here is you have a bearing surface, right? You have a bolt that's going through uh, and they don't want it to loosen up. So what, when you don't want a bolt to loosen up, you put two nuts on it and you back them against each other so that this isn't tight, but this is tight. And then you have a bit of a bearing there. And what's cool about that is things haven't changed in, in, in so long, like I, I still use this to this day. Like I, I've done this so many times, at least my career. And it's just cool to see consistency uh, throughout time. It's, it's really getting me excited. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this just a little bit of oil, a little bit of penetrating fluid, just to kind of hopefully ease everything out of here. I um. I don't want to be too rough with this stuff, even though this thing has probably suffered, oh gosh, decades of abuse. I don't know, I wanted to give, give it some, oh, oh, that was, that was sweet. Looky there. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm uncovering history right now. Now we'll see how this one goes. Not bad at all. Wow, this is going to be a piece of cake. You know, I feel like this thing hasn't been dormant as long as I, you know, feel like it should have been, you know? Like, I, I feel like this thing is still alive, just waiting to be utilized. Oh, a little gummy, but that's okay. It's got decades of grease and tarnish in there. Well, she's no longer seized. Just take our time. How cool is this? 
Oh my goodness. I want to investigate just how worn out all of these elements are. There's been a lot of miles on this thing. How neat. Let me give you a closer look. Oh, check this out. Look at the wear on this thing. Look at how keyed in that is. How beautiful. You know why they did that is so that the pressure, the pressure on top of this tool is on this bar and not on to shear these bolts. How clever. And look at that. They even uh, keyed that in to where that's adjustable. Geniuses. You also got to think, this was a time of self-reliance. They didn't just have a, a Harbor Freight to go to or a Lowe's. They didn't have, like, they had to build it themselves to not break because it was their livelihood. What a neat thing to uncover. Gosh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Check, okay. Check this out. I was wondering for a second there, I was like, oh, when they were laying this tool out, they missed. Huh. No, it's two different settings. Check this out, okay. So it was originally set to where the dies pass each other completely. They had it to where it can jump up about an inch to where they can cut thick pieces of probably lead, big sheets of copper. How neat is that? What a, what a creation. Okay, let's check out the other end of this thing. All right, let's check this thing out. So you can see the original weld here and it may have been, it may have been a forge weld originally that they then had to repair and uh, stick weld later on. Um, very interesting, I'm excited to get this all uh, cleaned up so I can actually see a little bit of detail here. Now the next thing I'm looking at is this piece of bar that they used as their shim. You see the material has been keyed in so that all of this you know, downward motion rests upon this piece of stainless steel or aluminum. Let's find out, I'll be able to test it right here. It's stainless steel, perfect. Yeah, stainless steel right in there and it looks like it's just wedged in. Looks like half by half. Um, but check this out now. This thing was so well used and well greased, thankfully, uh, that you the wear plate where this thing was wearing down still shows shine and it's nice and smooth. That, 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 tell, that tells me that this surface was so hardened that it maintained this shine all of these years. How cool is that? It work hardened to that, that work surface to where the point to where it still re, you know, keeps that shine. How neat is that? Now the next thing on the agenda is to lift all that rust off of these parts. Now, 
I could use chemicals, I could use a lot of different things, I could use sandpaper, but I think I'm just gonna do it quick and dirty with our trusty die grinder. Now, these things are very useful, and what I'm gonna use is a very soft bristled um, wire wheel. And why I'm using soft rather than coarse is because I don't wanna damage any of the, you know, the marrings on the steel. Like, I don't wanna lose any of the history, the story on these parts. So I wanna very gently lift that rust off and then I'm gonna maybe sand a little bit then I'll oil. Got most of the surface rust all taken off. Now I wanna finish things off with some fine steel wool just to kind of take the excess, just whatever's left right off of there and then to really open up all the textures of this ancient steel. God, this is fun. So now as I'm working, I'm paying attention to this, you know, these old welds and where, you know, there's been repairs over the years. And another thing I found is over here, you see a stamp, a stamp from the old tool that this was salvaged from, which actually gives me insight to that there. Now this is very strange. And you know what? I finally figured out what it is. This was an axle. That is a keyway. So this, <laughs> let me give you some, a keyway is pretty much a slot that a hub went on here that also had a keyway. And then you, you hammer in a chunk of steel here that disallows it from going like this. This used to be straight in line here. They bent this, this, <laughs> this old axle this way at a 90 degree angle. And that's what that curve was. I was so curious and I feel so good to have some answers. All right, so I was able to get the, uh, the die pretty darn sharp back to where it used to be uh, across here. I mean, it's about as good as it's been in a long time. There's still a little bit of character, but I think that's gonna be just fine. Get this thing back together here. Got all these all nice and cleaned up, ready to go. This is going to be practically brand new and ready for it.
And this thing will only tighten up as time goes past, you know what I mean? It'll, uh, it'll kind of settle into itself. Oh yeah, ready to rock. Now that the top moving armature is now all refurbished, sharpened, ready to rock and roll, now it's time for the bottom. But I hesitate because the second I start taking and unthreading all of these nuts and bolts and lags and screws out of this thing, it's very unlikely that everything will line back up again the way it was because right now it's rock solid and I want it to remain so. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually refurbish it in place so I don't weaken that structural integrity that it's been maintaining for 80 to 100 years, you know what I mean? So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I mean, of course, pieces of me want to get underneath there and clean all that up and see what treasures lie beneath. But I, I feel like I have a responsibility to the tool. I have a responsibility to the project at hand, and I think that is the right choice. So let's begin. Now there's an awkward dilemma because I have a blind rounded carriage bolt on this side so I have nothing to really hold on to to back this nut up and it seized on me. I even put a little bit of lubricant on it and I'm surprised. Let's see if I can't just really get in there. I got an idea. Okay, the theory is if I'm able to put enough pressure into that socket, I'm talking a lot of pressure. I might be able to hold on to that with that much friction to be able to crack this through. And would you looky there? Oh man, the uh, threads must be marred on this side. Maybe I can clean those up as well with a little file. But good news is, we're good to go. Oh funny, look at this, okay. Have everything accounted for, very good. Now look at the funny pieces of stock they just had around the shop to make that level and make that correct. How wonderful. There's just something about human ingenuity that is just the most tremendous thing for me. I, I just love it so much. Just remember how this went. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. It's in very good shape, but I'd, I'd love to see it shiny and looking hungry.
Okay, so this has been a lot of fun. So as I'm working on this thing and uh, just paying close attention to the hardware and like all of the dings and nicks. Now you can definitely see where the threads were damaged by someone probably just jumping up and down on that bar. So they must have put stacked these in there knowing you know, retro retroactively knowing that like oh, okay yeah we gotta put all of that pressure down on the steel itself and not onto these threads it's just it's been such a joy to watch their learning process unfold right before my eyes the time has come where i've got to get in here and fish out whatever's holding all of this up there's just you can see just chunks of steel that oh this is some of their trimmings Wow, that's some thick stuff. So they're probably hot cutting. No, no, no. That's just, that's every bit of eighth inch plate, eighth inch sheet. Come on, get out of there. Oh, look at this. See, to me, this is gold. This is from their hands. This is trimmings that came out through these dies and wedged themselves under here for me to find. I might have to make myself like a T-Rex tooth <laughs> pendant out of that thing. That's, that's awesome. Is there any more treasure in here? I think that's it. Yeah, and that's just going to stay like that. I don't want to touch any of this uh, funny sheet metal that they used because there's no way I'm going to get it back into the spot it was. So I just want to leave it.
Okay, now that we got her all back put together, she's right as rain, she opens up, she shuts. We gotta test it. The first test is some 20 gauge copper. <laughs> like a dream. Okay, let's scale up the difficulty a little bit. Let's do 1 16th steel sheet. Not a problem at all. Actually, there was, it was lapped over on stuff. I cut two of them. Oh my God. Not, like, nothing. Now, here's the booger. Let's go 16 inch stainless. I gotta tell you, this thing is bad to the bone. I love it. Who knows how old this thing is and it just cuts like it's brand spanking new. What a treasure. Now I think I'm gonna coat her in a, uh, a nice layer of linseed oil so that this finish can stay. And I can't wait to introduce her to my shop. Wow, look at her, ready for another 50 some odd years of service. What, what an honor to be able to rebuild a machine like this, especially one from my forefathers. I, um, how serendipitous the situation is, is, is beyond me. I had no idea that any of these tools existed until very recently. Um, I'm pretty much blown away. Here, I, uh, what do you think, buddy? Well, thank you so much for enjoying this with me. Uh, I cannot wait to start on more, and I want to take you the entire journey with me. And as always, my friends, thank you for watching.